Welcome back. So this article by Todd Bryant was written, I guess, December, or actually I think it was eight hours ago today, so today's the 16th, based on this tweet from the 13th. So Todd Bryant writes, it sure seems like everybody's writing, hey, look, I got a new peak rating. And, I mean, nobody's going to write a tweet that says, hey, look, my rating sucks, but uh, this is happening. At least it feels like it is. Um, now, I'll say from immediately, I'll qualify this. There is some theory that the more players there are on a website, the greater the minimum and maximum extreme ratings are going to be. So if you have a sample size of tens of hundreds of thousands of players, and you keep expanding um, that population, there's some expectation that that will actually reshape uh, the rating pool as there are more fine-tuned... Uh, so say you had a club that had like five people. You're not going to know super well what the five people's ratings are unless they're playing in some other system. If you have a club that have 50 people, you could get a much stronger sense of like who's the best, who's the worst, and uh, the ratings would be less random and more like spread out and distributed over um, with a smaller minimum and greater maximum, just as a function of the distribution. So that's a theory that's ongoing here. But there's a lot of people that say, hey, look, I got a new rating and it's so awesome. And I've not managed to succeed at this before. So based on the social media, based on people reacting in fun ways, you know, um, the question becomes, is it possible to analyze what's going on with ratings? And that's not to say, like, even if there is inflation, that's not a good thing or a bad thing. Hey, welcome. Uh, some people might find it disturbing, but, you know, it's more important to understand what's going on than to actually fix anything. Um, so they downloaded these immense databases. Um, so <laughs> I think I'm a little confused here. So he says he downloaded, took the username and rating pairs in each month's rated place Blitz games computed average monthly ratings to smooth out the noise, and matched usernames between the two months and compare the diffs. So, um, as he mentions, two databases, three databases, I don't know exactly how many he got, but he took these files and extracted out the ratings because PGN is very well formatted. There's this uniform structure to it. So grep does quite excellently at figuring out like what the ratings were and are. Um, next to Python script, uh, collected the usernames and average ratings from all the files. I mean, yeah, you extract this and dump it into a database somehow. He preferred, uh, Todd Bryant preferred here MySQL, but you could use any relational database, really. Um, so from 2019 until present day, the average user has gained 226 Blitz points. Now, I think if you had a player whose rating started at 2,000 and dropped to 1,500, they might not be so active. That's another theory. So, I mean, there's a lot of potential way reasons that this statistical method might not be perfect. But, hey, it's interesting that the average user gained 226. Um, it'd be kind of fun to know, like, have users' uh, puzzle ratings changed? Even though the puzzle sets are frequently changing, too. But, you know, if the thought is that, well, maybe players are performing differently against each other for whatever reason, maybe comparing that to them playing against some other thing, like a bot or a puzzle, could serve as some kind of a benchmark. Um, so did this improvement all happen during last year? No. 
user ratings went up about 100 points the year before and about 120 points this last year. And who's gaining the rating points? Is it the people under 1,200? Is it people between 1,200 and 1,600, etc.? Let me zoom in a little bit here. So under 1,200, um, I'm not exactly sure whether or what this means, like max rating as an average before and after, I don't know, but um, average difference uh, under 1200 is 175, under 1600, 128, um, under 2000, 105, and the higher up you get, the harder it is to get a lot of rating points. Yeah, so, I mean, that kind of makes sense. Even if you're super active, you're not going to gain a bajillion rating points and completely break the system. Um, so by rating group, that's the distribution. Um, I guess this is per year? Um, let's see. You grouped them by rating range. Uh, from 2020... 03 versus 2021, 11. So earlier he's saying the average player since 2019, the previous year to 2020, had gained 250. Um, and so in these past 03 to 11, these past 20 months to zero, um, yeah, I guess average players gaining somewhere between uh, 10 and 5 points a month. So over time that adds up. Players at lower ratings experience the biggest gains. Well, players at lower ratings have the most to gain. It's not... if folks have time to learn the game, yeah, it's possible. Um, actually this makes me wonder. So the year before had basically the same trend, he says, where players are just gaining ratings. Finally, he checked how the rating distribution changed. Let's check out this. Oops, sorry. So the distribution 2019, 2020 March, 2021 November, or 2019 March, 2020 March, 2021 November, so percentile 99.9, you'd have to be 28, 24.84. Yeah, now um, to get in the 99.9th percentile, your rating has to be 26.60 or above. And this is the most apparent change, that the folks at the top have higher ratings now. Um, I wonder how these shapes are compared to each other. I mean, you could see that, like, this is, well, huh, never mind. I was going to say, clearly, this number is less than this number, this number is less than this. And just compare this across and see that all these numbers all are monotonically increasing. But this 2007 versus 2028 for 90th percentile, that hasn't changed too much. The game guys at the very top, the top 1%, have significantly increased in number in the quantity of the rating. Um, so, yeah, then the rest of the pool seems not to have changed too much in terms of the percentile. Um, I wonder what that means. <laughs> Does that mean you can finally reach 2400? I don't know, man. Um, I think min max uh, a range of players, but the average is around 150. Yep, I guess so, or 1500. So, yeah, the way I see this is that 2020 March and 2021 November have really quite similar distribution shapes. I don't know if it's the same folk, like, I don't know to what extent folks dropped out this year and might come back during uh, the winter holiday. Who knows? Um, so, uh, 
Yeah, but last year, I imagine, well, I mean, I know last year there was a lot of work that had to be done to modernize the code to handle higher than normal loads. Uh, so much so that I think the preceding December or January or something, no, I'm sorry, when the announcement had gone out about the pandemic, um, I had um, said rip leech us because uh, it had become obvious um, within weeks uh, that the server capacity was not going to handle the increased load. And it took a lot of work from our lead developer to make things work. And that's still much appreciated. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad the site is now boasting more players than ever. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether how many folks have been dropping out since last year to just pursue other interests now that things are opening up again. Um, so interpretation of results. Thank you. Yes, interpretation of results is non-trivial. Huge, huge number of players joined the pool. I can't imagine why. <laughs> um, so also because players have joined the pool, this actually like or accidentally like makes the site more popular. And if everybody's telling their friends about the site, you know, news gets out that, hey, there's this other chess site. And this might change, uh, like, who signs up for the site. As opposed to just, like, the site spreading by the normal word of mouth. Now you might have, like, other videos and live streams and other things that more and more folks, especially those spending time on the internet, uh, discover what Leech Us is. So, yep. That, this uh, might change the demographic of who plays on the site as more and more people know what it is. Um, so, yeah, the starting rating on Leech Us, I believe for most players, is 1,500. Um, I think for Grandmasters and such, it might be different. I don't think it heavily bears on the rating system that players who have an enormous rating in a different system enter with a higher rating, but it might have some impact. Um, I don't think the starting rating matters too much. Um, unless, like, everybody had a starting rating of 2,000 or something, that would change things. But if like 99.999% of players enter at 1500, then that's probably not going to matter much when folks enter with different ratings. What might impact the rating pool is if people join with 1500, lose a lot of games, and then quit. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, this ends the article, so let me wrap it up. I'll, Huge number of players joined the pool. I was expecting this to be an enormous section trying to interpret the results, but it's hard to interpret. So, huge number of players joined the pool in three periods. Um, I think, yeah, those three samples is what he's talking about. Unique usernames increased to 1.1 million. New signups will be heavily skewed toward low rated novices. Um. Probably. That would actually be interesting to explore if there were a way to explore it. Perhaps a big shift in strength on the bottom end um, of the distribution percolates the top. Yeah, that was the theory I was just trying to explain. Perhaps some people just get better. Still in a one-year period, yeah, he has a uh, perception about if people are going to improve 200 points or 100 points or something over a year. That seems like a lot to him. And that's where the analysis ends. Both during and before, there's been rating inflation. Well, I guess um, that's the news that's out there. 
Um, hmm. He says, or the website here says it's a four minute read. Actually, that's pretty accurate. Unless you're trying to like go on digressions as you go through this. So, uh, I guess thanks to Todd Bryant for suggesting this article or suggesting this as something worthy of exploration for noting all the tools it takes to download the PGNs and strip them and all this stuff. Write a quick Python script. Thanks again for sharing that too. Um, to load it all into MySQL. Honestly, the fact that there are so many steps involved here, even though each step on its own is not that bad. Having to figure out all these steps and then having to go one step further to like implement them and not make any mistakes and debug things if something goes wrong and there's just a lot of detail work here that's uh, blocked my interest in pursuing this kind of research too deeply. Um, but you know maybe I should take this guy's work and build on it at some point. Um, I wonder, although it seems the more natural thing is somebody should set up a website that does this kind of analysis more easily. Or maybe like this kind of data could be imported into Kaggle, although I think Kaggle's changing the way they do challenges or tasks or whatever. So that's unfortunate. Maybe some other open data science website would be a good place to share the data and just see what people will do with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's floating point rounding errors. That would be epic. Who knows, right? There's no way to know. Um, also, funnily enough, I've disabled display of my rating on Leechus. Um, just so I don't have to worry about this sort of thing. Uh, although when I do share my PGNs, uh, on Discord... I actually see that I've gained like about 200 rating points. I don't think I've improved that much. So, you know, I mean, this is a sampling or self selection bias to say, hey, I see a trend or something that looks like a trend, and I see my own data, and gosh, I wonder. But I can't take it further than that because it would take a lot of analysis and work to prove anything. But, you know. I do wonder. I think the more easily this data becomes accessible to folks, the more cool stuff they do with it. But it probably takes a lot of work to convince the right people, I don't know, to do the right sort of analysis. Because most people who are interested in doing an analysis want to reach some conclusion uh, that they had in their mind. Um, so it's hard to reach the conclusion and also be super critical of everything you're doing. And I guess I include myself in that number. I'd like to see um, something justifying, hey, my rating increased, and I don't remember getting any better. How do I know if I got better? That's, in my mind, the real question. Um, how do we use some way to measure uh, if people are learning? And I think, though, like, performance rating is going to lag behind what you've learned. If you study end games, there's still going to be some gaps in your knowledge. If you study openings, there's going to be some gaps. But putting in that initial study effort will eventually pay dividends. What I'm more interested in is sort of method for measuring have people improved, have they learned? And then the next extension on that is like what tools can we offer to a person free or otherwise, to help them learn things better. Uh, it's much easier to measure something like this with chess, I think, than it is to measure it with most topics. Um, I could be wrong, but it seems easier to measure chess performance than, say, it is to measure somebody's proficiency at piloting an airplane or handling, um, I don't know, anything super advanced uh, it seems like this um there's just a lot of ways to ch test a person's level of performance and understanding at something that's essentially multiple choice 
with a ridiculous number of options, but still um, it's easier to quantify things this way than with many other fields. And it's also easier to teach people because uh, there's um, a plethora of resources out there. There's just not the same knowledge about which resources are best for which person. And I guess coaches kind of span the gap there. They're supposed to have this tremendous knowledge about just study these things and you'll get better. Coaches will tell you that. And they might be right, but part of the secret might also be that hey, if you're paying for a coach, you're super invested in improving. Who knows? I guess there's no way to know unless uh, everybody gets access to this data and does some mad data science on it. And then we figure out okay who improves is it the person who like creates the studies is it the person who writes blog posts is it the person who's solving puzzles like what is the magic ingredient to chess improvement i don't know time will tell you just have to be patient hope we enjoyed this little analysis uh, discussion here